So in the previous segment, we looked at conditional synchronization, and we've also already looked at locks. Now what we're going to do is shift a little bit. We're going to look at abstractions. So things we build on top of locks and conditional synchronization, which are really about implementation. So we look at abstractions, syntactic sugar, ways to reason about how to use them in your program. As part of that, uh, we're going to look at uh, semaphores and monitors as a continuation of this. And then we look at readers, writers problem, which is a specific uh, kind that occurs when you access data. And we'll look at uh, how to speed them up. So first we'll start out with semaphores and monitors, and then we'll look at the reader writer problem. Okay, and then finally look at language support for synchronization. So semaphores. So semaphores, so I'll first define them, and then we'll look at places where they're used. Okay, so simply put, a semaphore is a non-negative integer that has a value associated with it, and it supports the following two operations. So there are only two operations that really occur on a semaphore. And it's a non-negative integer value. So it's between 0 and some number n. Okay. So there's the P operation, which is essentially an atomic decrement. So whenever the semaphore is non-zero, positive value, it decrements it by one. Okay, think of it as kind of a weight operation. We look at what's the usage of these uh, semaphores in a second. And V, which is an atomic operation that increments the semaphore, uh, waking up a weighting P, if any. And this could be thought of as similar to a signal or a notify in conditional synchronization. Okay. And the only time the integer itself is directly set is at initialization. So the only two operations on semaphores are P and V. So where would it be used? A common case usage of semaphores is where there are a finite number of resources. Uh, think of as a buffer, of memory buffer, where you're vending out uh, entities. And you only can vend out a finite number of them. And if you have vendor out all of them, then you want the requester to wait until some of them have been returned back, in this case the V. And if it's full, then you just want to keep giving away. So it's just used to vend out resources. Okay. So V puts it back, puts the resource back into the shared pool, and P removes the res a single entity from the shared pool. So P removes an entity from the shared pool, V puts it back. Okay? And if the pool is empty, then any of the P operations need to wait for the V. Okay? All right. So note that an important condition is that P's and V's are scoped. That is, for every P, there's a V. There are as many V's as there's P's. So if you took out five entities from the pool, you got to put back five entities into the pool. Okay? And the total number of entities in the pool is a finite number. So you can only run as many P's. You can only remove as many resources as the total in the pool itself. So here's an example. So we have maybe a traffic light, and we have two lanes. So we have two lanes we can vend out. And let's say the first one, so the value is 2, the maximum value is 2. The first one is occupied with the first train. The next one is occupied by the second train. And now the value is 0. Okay. So any further P's. So this is a point of P. This is a point of V. Okay. So any further P's wait at the light until one of them gets through calls a V, and then releases the resource. Okay. Once that happens, then this can get through. Okay, but until that point, the lane is occupied. So, what I'm going to do, that's semaphores, and 
the next thing I'm going to start off with is monitors. And I'm going to go back to the producer consumer problem, uh, put that in perspective, and then come back to monitors and see how mon monitors can also help solve the producer consumer problem.